Welcome back to the Spa Business Mastery Podcast. My name is Kirsten Foss, and today we have Delia for our Spa Marketing with Delia, one of our favorite shows that our spa owners love to listen to and watch because we usually have some really good juicy stuff. And today I would say it's probably even juicier than normal. Um, mm -hmm. Today's topic is Q2 Social Media Marketing Planning Mini Workshop. So um, today is one of those days where you definitely want to have your notebook and your pen. And there is a download for you. We've created a document for you to download. It'll be in, this, in the show notes, as well as on our website under podcast uh, and this particular episode. So you'll definitely want to download that document and follow along with us uh, in this recording. All right. So one of the biggest challenges in terms of spot ownership is marketing <laughs> uh, for spa owners every single time that's usually the first place that they want to go to mm -hmm. to fix their uh, sales issues and it's also the first place where they get super frustrated because it is marketing is so big it can be so messy <laughs> if you don't really know what you're doing because there is so much information out there mm -hmm. it's really difficult to Kind of discern through all of the things you know you you see all the the gurus do this do that do this do that but how do you exactly do that for spas <laughs> and they don't give you really tangible things that you can do it's very vague right yeah yeah. yeah well you I mean really it comes down to the fact there really is no magic pill when it comes to marketing today we really want to focus on social media marketing and helping you to cr helping you create your own quarterly strategy for the second quarter. So that is March, April, and May. Okay. Now this is also for organic social media, um, as well as being able to use this content to repurpose it for your email marketing, um, for your uh, in-spa advertising, for your website, all of the stuff. You, you want to repurpose as much as possible because that makes it, you know, you don't have to you know, come up with new stuff all the time. Way less and work for you. Yeah. Way less work. And your mes message is consistent across all of your channels, platforms, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody is going to be looking at your social media posts. Not everybody's going to be opening your email. Uh, not everybody's going to be going to your website. Not everybody's going to be coming to your spa that month. So you need to kind of hit all of these different places so that whoever your consumer is, whether they're brand new haven't been to you yet or they're an existing client they have to be able to see these things in different places yeah for sure they do yeah so <clears throat> for those of you that don't know uh for your marketing for specifically for your social any marketing really um there's a couple of things that you need to to know first as far as like what's involved in creating your marketing so first of all we talk about a lot of time a lot you hear us talk a lot about strategy and that's one of the biggest pieces that you know we really sit down because this helps us determine how our marketing is going to be optimized if we don't have a strategy to start then really we're just kind of pulling ideas out of our hat uh, we're throwing that we love this the proverbial spaghetti at the wall um, <laughs> and hope that things stick and if you're finding that you know, you're, you're just throwing that spaghetti at the wall and things aren't sticking and you might get a couple things here or there, but you're not really sure why it comes down to making sure that you have the strategy and that you're really thinking about it. And the strategy, the strategy is the plan it's and the it's, plan. it's the how, like it's the, it's the plan. It's yeah. the why we are doing this. You know, that whole spaghetti on the wall thing is, is it's really difficult to have you don't have a plan. So you're throwing spaghetti at the wall. So, you know, if you're wanting to, if you really want to increase your facial bookings, mm -hmm. throwing spaghetti on the wall would be like, oh, I got a book. I got to make a post today. Uh, I don't know what to post. Oh, we'll do a waxing post. <laughs> right. It's not. And, to do and it might not be in alignment with what's happening, you know, in your spa, right? You're just thinking of things that you need to post because you have to post something. <laughs> so having a strategy that really breaks down what your monthly focus is going to be and how you're going to, you know, get your messaging out there is super important. The next piece is implementation. So now that you have your strategy, you have to do the things, right? So it's the what <laughs> we're talking about the what and what are the steps um, to getting that done? 
Um, and then the next piece to that is making sure that you're tracking your results, because if you don't know what is happening as far as your analytics go, then you have no idea what's working and what's not working. So there's no way that you would be able to optimize anything that you're doing if you don't have any insight as to how your how your posting is going, right? So yeah, like if you like if you're if you are implementing strategy, um, then and but you aren't tracking your results, you wouldn't actually know if your strategy is working or not, or which parts of your strategy are working. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes we can get, uh, misinformation or can, we can believe things that actually aren't true. Um, so for example, uh, sometimes, um, like with image quotes, right. Sometimes mm -hmm. you may not think that they're getting a lot of engagement or they're not getting a lot of comments or anything, but when we look at our analytics for those kinds of posts, they're one of the best performing posts. So yeah. <laughs> you're going to hear a lot about what you should be doing for social media um, yeah. on social media, but. <laughs> and, and another piece of that is, you know, we know right now that reels are the big thing, right? And so, yep, that should absolutely be part of your strategy, but it doesn't mean that you push the other pieces like your regular feed posts, you know, your static images that go in there, your stories. It doesn't mean that you push those off to the side. It just means that you're now putting in another piece to the it. puzzle, right? Yeah. You're putting an another layer into your marketing. And um, yes, it's annoying that they keep coming out with these things. <laughs> another thing, you know, and another thing. Another thing it's to learn, annoying, right? But it's the nature of the beast for social media, for these platforms. Mm -hmm. This is how they keep going. They constantly keep innovating, which means as business owners, we have to constantly be innovating, even though it's really annoying because it means learning something new. <laughs> but when you pull all of this together, what really ends up happening is that you're producing really high level, valuable content that is speaking to your ideal client. It is consistent. You're speaking to, you know, current clients, new clients. Um, you're able to get your messages across um, in all different ways. And, you know, one of the biggest things that we love doing here, and because we've got, I think we're what, 30 years in the industry between, well, both of us really, 25 and 30 years. I think we've got about 15 combined years of digital marketing experience between the two of us. And so we work really hard in the agency to produce content that does speak to that ideal client. And that's, so that's our jam. Like we, that's our jam. We, yeah, <laughs> you know, I think really our a big piece of our value is that we've been in the spa industry for so long. We understand the nuances of services. We understand the nuances of retail. It's a, it's an industry that has service and retail. Most yeah. industries are one or the other. Um, so because we've been working in the industry with clients and as spa owners now shifting into have shifted into digital marketing we we're that lens we can see mm -hmm. exactly what the spas are needing and how that needs to translate into social media posts yeah we speak spa we speak spa <laughs> and we speak digital marketing <laughs> we speak digital marketing <laughs> yeah so, you know, we've got, like Kirsten said, this is a, a get your pen and paper ready because this is going to be a really great podcast for you to get some ideas. And we want to share our process with you so you can steal our content for creating um, our stellar spa marketing strategy. So we've, you know, we've nailed down our process. So we, we have, we're very systemized. We've nailed down this process with our current spa marketing um, clients, and we want to share it with you so that you can see how it works and you can take these steps and implement them and, uh, you know, get the download and follow our instructions, come back to this podcast and we'll walk you through uh, what that looks like. So I think Kirsten's yeah, listen as many times as you need. Um, because this is exactly what, if, uh, if somebody was coming to us as a spa owner and saying, hey, I don't want you to do the social media uh, marketing for me, but can you teach me how to do this? This is what we would be walking them through on multiple months. We'd go three months and do this, but we want to give you guys something really tangible to use that will make your marketing, especially Q2, if you can get into this rhythm in, for your Q2 marketing, you just repeat this, you know, different content, but you repeat the pattern of the process. Yeah. 
which Absolutely. makes the system. And we love systems. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for systems. We love systems. Okay. So um, when do you need to start? So for we're talking about Q2, uh, creating content for Q2, March, April, May. When April, do you need to get started? Um, you need to, sorry, it was April, May, June. Thanks, Delia. Mm -hmm. When do you need to get started? You need to be working all of March. <laughs> So we're at the end of, we're kind of third week of February, for sure the first week of March, you need to start creating this content for April. At the beginning of April, you'll start creating the content for May. At the beginning of May, you'll start creating the content for June. So you're always working a month ahead so that by the time you get to, if you're creating um, April's content in March, you'd ideally want it done all the edits done, scheduled, uh, ready to go uh, that last week of the month. So it's it's done. You can move on to your next steps. All right. We generally lock our uh, marketing content in every month by the 25th. So yeah. it just gives us a little bit of wiggle room if there are any kind of last minute things that come up. Yeah. All right. So before we dive into the actual strategy, there's a few things that need to be, uh, there's one thing in particular that needs uh, attention. And that is, you need to sit and think about your goals for each of these months, okay? So and it's gonna be different for everybody. So there's no like blanket strategy for all of you. Um, I know many of you listening are skin therapy clinics only, uh, med spas, some of you are waxing. So um, some of you are full service. So this again will be different for everybody in terms of a goal, but make, make these notes here. What part of the business are you actually trying to grow right now? Um, are you a full service spa and trying to take more of market share for skin? then we would be recommending that you are, for most of your marketing, that you are talking about skin, okay? Um, does it align with your spa seasonality? So we're talking about Q2, where's, you know, spring, kind of beginning of summer. What is your normal seasonality? Um, if you are a full service spa, you probably are, you know, up to your eyeballs in waxing and pedicures. <laughs> um, now, do you want more waxing and pedicures or do you actually need more business in another department like massage or um, skin? Um, if you're not sure what your seasonality is, meaning you're not sure what services um, were high, low, that time you'll need to go into your reports from last year and just pull up, uh, pull up those metrics. Now, um, even though you look at last year's and you can, you should be able to have some sort of like kind of pie chart uh, that will have all the services divvied up in, into a percentage. If you see that, you know, June, last June's pedicures was huge and you don't want that to happen again, then you know that your marketing needs to shift out of talking about pedicures and shift into talking about what you do want them to be, be, be booking with. All right. So, now, okay, go ahead, Delia. Yeah, just wanted to add uh, one of the spas that um, I had worked at was a full service spa, but we really, really, really wanted to focus more on skin. And so I think we use the 80 20 rule. <laughs> and we've heard you've heard us talk about the 80 20 rule in conversations, but it, our posting strategy was 80% skincare, whether it be education, promotional, that kind of stuff. And then the other 20% could be um, about our other services. And that helped us shift being more focused on one, one niche. Yeah. So I'm, we, we hope that you can see that right out of the gate in terms of goal setting and sitting down to take the time to think about what do we, what do I need in this business? What kind of business do I need? It sets you up to create some themes happening in the month. All right. So if everybody is ready to actually dig in. Um, so make sure that you download this uh, particular worksheet. Uh, you'll find it in the show notes as well as on our podcast on our website. And I'm just going to share my screen. I know that those of you who are uh, watching the podcast are not going to be able to necessarily see things, but you can always um, go back and take a look. Sorry, I'm just getting my screens sorted out here. One more second. There we go. All right. So 
this is a Google Doc. Um, it is in view only. So what that means is that you won't be able to make any edits on this document. Uh, you will have to make a copy. So simply go into file, make a copy, and you know it'll automatically say copy of blah, blah, blah. You can rename it however you want. And then it's in your Google Docs, okay? Um, and then when it's your own copy, then you can make whatever edits you want to it as, uh, as much as possible. So we use this particular layout with our uh, monthly social media clients. And it's for us, it's been the easiest way to gather information, organize our social media information, and then be able to transfer this information to our social media assistant who is doing the captions, the hashtags, and all that kind of stuff. But if you're doing it on your own, this is still a very valuable document just to get your head straight about how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. All right, we recommend that you batch this each month of content into five sections. Batching meaning don't you want to separate the times that you're working on this. Don't try to do it all in one sitting. You'll make yourself crazy. It's just too overwhelming. Even we can't do that. It's it's just mm -hmm. it's just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So week one, uh, we recommend is your strategy creation that is using this particular document and filling in what your posts are going to be like. Uh, week two, go ahead and start creating your feed design. Uh, we like to use later.com as our tool. It's um, uh, It's got a thumbs up from Instagram, so there's no issues with scheduling posts or anything like that. It's an approved Instagram tool. Um, and the other thing we like about using later is that there's a preview link on there. So you can pull all your images and your videos in, you can hit preview and you can actually see the, what the feed design looks like. So you can move stuff around and make it, make it more aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. Um, the third week, go back to this. So now you've got your feed design done somewhere in later, hopefully something like that. Now you can go in and write captions for all of these, add the hashtags, put in your locations um and your posting times and schedule okay week four uh is an easy one it's just doing some edits and locking that uh, locking that month in now if you're doing this on your own you don't necessarily have to lock it in but we do recommend it as a almost like a little bit of a what would you call it? yeah a due date for yourself <laughs> Just if to keep you accountable for yeah. if you have any uh, team members, if you have a social media manager that's working with this uh, on this with you, then they would they would definitely need to know all of this information and your timing, the due dates and deliverables. Um, also in week four, we're recommending that you now that all your content is created for social, repurpose it, make life easy for you, uh, repurpose it for your emails. Um, you can literally take the same some of the same images copy and paste the captions uh, and, and put them into an email. Um, <clears throat> repurpose it for a blog. If you want to take one of those pieces of info and make a blog out of it, update your website, and of course your inspo marketing and inspo conversations. All right, so that's the big picture for organizing your time. Let's talk about the big picture for the actual focus for each of these months. So we still aren't ready to drill down into each month yet because we need to get an overarching view of what these next three months look like so that we can think about the services and the products that we want to be focusing on. Yeah. Dill, you want to take over at this point? Sure. Yeah. So what we do in this kind of next step of uh, creating these focus months is so we've broken this down into three different months. So April, May, and June. And so you want to start thinking about, okay, so we're, we've used uh, skin therapy as an example in, in our focus here. And so in April, we want to start thinking about, um, you know, some of the things that clients are going to be experiencing on their skin, because this will be the focus of all of our content and treatments and products that we're choosing. So we've chosen winter recovery because a lot of times, you know, people's skin needs that uh, reset coming out of winter. It's really dull. It's, you know, dehydrated. It's experiencing the well, winter blues. <laughs> and some people have been, some people have been Away. traveling in the winter. You've got some snowbirds that like to go somewhere hot and they've been in the sun. 
They're coming yeah, and maybe they haven't had, you know, their regular treatments. And so they're really needing to come back and have, you know, that winter recovery treatment. So that would, that would be a recommendation for um, a April focus. And so the tree, you want to choose one treatment uh, to focus on and two products. And then with that, um, you're going to create all your different posts based on this focus. So we've got the treatment focus for April is a hydrating and a microderm facial, get some of that, you know, sloughing off of the dead skin cells, really hydrating that skin. Um, and then we've tied in um, some uh, products that would also um, help with, with this transition of the skin. And so we're talking hyaluronic acid um, and exfoliation. So again, sloughing off that dead winter skin and really hydrating that skin and prepping it for next steps um, as far as like seasonality goes. Um, then we've got for May, we're kind of getting into, you know, more of the more sun exposure, um, sun prep. So let's get the skin ready for, um, you know, accepting all of those hydrating ingredients and protective ingredients. And so we want to talk about hydrofacial, if that's something that you offer, um, something that would give the skin uh, a nice boost um, after the winter, because we're still kind of coming into, you know, from post-winter skin. Then we really want to start talking about, so the two products that we've picked for the May focus uh, would be an SPF product. We want to start, again, educating and talking about the importance of SPF. Yes, it's important all year round, but this is where we start ramping it up <laughs> for our clients who forget. And then, you know, pairing that with uh, something like an antioxidant, like vitamin C, so that you've got that, you know, protection um, and repair happening. And then in June, we're kind of moving into warmer weather. So maybe switching out some of those, um, you know, heavier products that they're, that they're using in the wintertime, layering um, kind of a lighter weight skincare routine. So you can, you know, start talking about different tips, um, tips and tricks that they can do. Uh, we chose the treatment, um, an oxygen infusion facial or something that would, that would give that almost, um, you know, red carpet glow. Um, something we're not talking about doing in the winter time. You think about okay, we're doing maybe more chemical peels, things like that. This time of year, we really want to focus on you know that brightening and and hydrating. So oxygen infusion facial or something along those lines, layering up those lighter weight skin uh, skincare products. So first product would be you know a lightweight moisturizer that you could focus on, and also think about in the summer when, you know, clients are out in the sun and even those who have been away, their skin is likely feeling, you know, extra um, irritated. If they've had a sunburn, then you, they need something refreshing and, and, and soothing. So, you know, offering um, a refreshing toner, um, so anything that would help to soothe the skin, those would be great ideas to focus on and, and highlight in your marketing strategy, which I believe is coming next. <laughs> so um, the key takeaway that we want you to see on the quarterly focus part is that each month has a theme that's in alignment with uh, what clients need at that time of year. And there is one service choice and two product choices per month. Now, we know that you have lots of other services and you want to, you know, you want them all to be booked. It doesn't work in marketing at all. <laughs> you cannot be all things to all people in marketing. This is why we need focus, focus, focus. Okay. So the same with the products, make sure those two products are matching up with what that service outcome is. Okay. Um, this is where we are really keeping things tight in terms of focus for treatment and service or for, for treatment and products. So the client is like, when you, when you go to your feed, it's super clear on what is being discussed and what you feel as a spa is important to them as a consumer. And I know one of the, you know, um, kind of pushbacks might be why I keep repeating myself, right? I keep saying the same thing over and over again. And that's okay because you have to keep repeating what you want to communicate because not everybody is going to see it. So just because well, you have I one mean, look at, yeah, look at all those, look at all the, the commercials, all of the commercials out there. It's the same messaging over and over and over and over ad nauseum. 
<laughs> we're not suggesting doing the same no, post yeah. over and over and over again, but we're talking about the same focus over and over and over again. And we're tying it all into that monthly focus. So everything that we're talking about, whether it be educational type posts, promotional type posts, or engagement type posts, it all ties into our monthly focus. All right, let's dive into uh, the first month. So I'm not, we're not going to go through giving you posts for um, for April, May, and June. We're going to go through April, and you should be able to have a pretty good idea about what you can do for the other months. We've actually created for you, um, so we've broken this up. We have three sections, so four educational posts, then we have four promotional posts, and then four engagement posts. Okay, that, le that leads you to 12 posts a month. You can certainly do more, but um, anything less, mm, we wouldn't recommend it. So what you will notice is that we have, these are essentially all of the post topics and talking points here. So we also have, are keeping in mind, very focused that for the month of April, we're talking about winter recovery. So our educational posts are going to be about winter skin tips. Um, it's going to be talking about, you know, educating on hydration and uh, exfoliation. So once we get to the educational posts here, we've given you four different examples of what educational posts can, can look like. Um, now, the thing about educational posts is that they do not have a sales call to action, meaning book now, go to the link on our bio to book, uh, buy now, click blah, blah, blah. Don't use the salesy call to actions for your education. You are giving them information. You're putting, you're putting goodwill into the bank uh, of these, of your ideal clients. Some of them are not even your clients yet. Some of them are. You don't always want to be having your hand out asking, asking, asking. So we've got, you know, some tips for skin recovery and transition. Um, why does your skin need a seasonal skincare review? This is prompting them to think, oh, do I need a skincare review? What's a skincare review? Because we're talking about the transition time, right? Um, we're giving them more education about different types of exfoliation. What they, we're giving them information education so that they can make discerning and critical thinking decisions, right? Um, and the last one we have our top four reasons to always have hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid in your skincare routine. So this is more like an ingredient spotlight. Those are those, we do those quite often. Um, then we move into having four promotional posts. So we've given you lots of talking points about the educational posts. The promotional posts will be definitely 100% uh, geared towards your service and your service description, as well as your products and those product descriptions that you get from your skincare companies. Either way, you'll have two treatment posts. Um, this one we suggest talking directly about the your hydrating microderm facial, whatever it is. Um, and essentially you can, for your caption, you can use your service description and beef it up just a little bit, right? About your opinion, why they would need it. Um, another treatment uh, post, a little bit different is giving a book, um, showing before and after and having a client story that they talk about their hydrating um, and microderm facial. So it's the same about you know, sharing the treatment, what it does, this is just giving some more clout about why they need, why they would want that treatment. And then you'd have one post about product, one product and another post about the second product. Anything you want to add? So that's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty. Yeah. And I would just also recommend that when you are like, these are just point forms that you're fleshing out your ideas, but then when you actually go to write your captions, just make sure that you're not writing a big wall of text. So yeah. we like to break it up with, um, you know, paragraphs, emojis, um, you know, some of these uh, little tips, if you're doing, um, you know, four tips or I oh, can't remember what it was, yeah, like far transitioning early. your skin, then you'd want to put those more in like bullet point types as opposed to writing out full paragraphs. It's yeah. just easier for a consumer to read. If you just think about, you know, how you consume information, people skim read. So if you make it easier for them 
to get all that info, then the better it is. 100%. All right. And then lastly, we have four engagement posts. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't want it to always be about selling. You don't always want it to be about educating. Um, It's got to be fun. It's got to be interactive, like feel like there's connection happening. So uh, testimonials are a really great um, engagement post. And, you know, you, you can do like a graphics with their written out testimony, testimonial, but you could also do video interviews. Um, and you could also share kind of your perspective of I had a client, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, tell the story that way. Mm-hmm. Um, before and afters, we can't stress this enough before and afters, before and afters, before and afters, (laughs) if you do nothing else, (laughs) especially with skin, um, I would say skin laser, um, you can do it, you can do it with waxing, Mm -hmm. pedicures. Um, but really, you know, when we hear a spa owner saying we need more facial clients, why aren't we getting more facial clients? And then we take a look at their social media. They have no before and after images. They're, all of their images are stock photography. You have all sales posts. It's too. all salesy it's posts. All you sales. have, yeah, you have no clout. Mm-hmm. Nobody believes you. <laughs> and and if they can't see what results they can get, then they're just going to pass by you. That nobody wants to go and look at a bunch of you know over processed images, right? Yeah. So well, it's just not real, and it's not real. In, a, in a world where we, you know, digital information can be skewed and there's a lot of shady people out there. Mm -hmm. More and more people are being discerning about where they're going to spend their money. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, it's my opinion, especially if you are a skin therapist, that you, uh, part of your soap notes is taking images for every facial. This isn't just about having them for before and after images. This is about actually charting how you should be charting (laughs) so that even just for your clients, Mm because, you know, if you've been doing treatments on them for six months, they get used to what their skin looks like. They may not remember what day one looked like. Yeah. You want to show them how far they've come. Yeah. And then if you're, if you're taking before and afters with every facial um, and you come across, you know, before and after that you would love, love, love to share in your uh, marketing, then you can ask them hey, you know, you've had such an amazing transformation. Would you mind if we shared your before and after pictures? We can protect your anonymity, all that kind of stuff. But it shouldn't be about taking before and afters for your marketing. It should be about before and afters for the client treatment, uh, first and foremost. That's my little my little <laughs> rant about before and afters. Uh, another engagement post uh, could be fact or fiction, uh, sharing a fact and a fiction and have your audience guess which is which. And then we always love funny skincare quotes. I know that those always get a good, mm-hmm. a good laugh. Always do well, yeah. You know, and some of the other other things you could think about is behind the scenes, people love to see, you know, what goes on in team meetings, team trainings, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, things like that, treatments in progress, um, anything that just gives the audience just a little bit more insight to you personally, your team, or whether you're solo. Um, Anything that, yeah, anything that gives them just a little bit more of a taste about who you are and how you can um, help support them in their transformation. 100%. And that's, you know, that kind of goes to like, we're in the business of giving personal services. It's a very, you know, our clients put a lot of trust in us. And so Mm -hmm. in order for them to do that right out of the gate uh, as a brand new client, they're likely going to be looking at all of your digital marketing to see if that it feels right. And the more of a window you have into your business, into your team, even into your, what you do on your, your time off, Mm -hmm. uh, they love that because by the time they come in for the treatment, they already feel like they know you guys a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, And that trust is already starting to build. And, you know, uh, another good one is we don't have it all written down here, but like sharing your story, right. Mm -hmm. Sharing. So it's your origin story yeah your origin story or even yeah your origin story how you got here um kind of what makes you motivated to, to go so you know consider something like maybe you used to have acne and you're running an acne program then you can share you know 
your story, how it made you feel, and your mission to find, you know, solutions for other people. Those are really touching. Yeah, it really is. Um, okay, so that gives you an example of how to create posts for the month of April. Um, we're not going to go through all of these talking points, but we did want to include them so that you had an idea of how your captions will start shaping up. Okay. All right. So that was April. We've given you, we've set this up and formatted it for you to do May and June. Um, and in here, I put down at the bottom here, post inspo. We often, um, we've got three of us that uh, are working on in digital marketing now on the team. And we often like to share like Instagram reels. We'll copy the URL and um, share it either in our, in our uh, work chat or in a Google doc. So that if you, you know, you're scrolling in your own social media and you see an audio that you like, or you see an image or a post that you like, um, even from somebody else, you know, copy and paste it in here so that by the time you go to do your, uh, create your strategy, you've got some inspo in there that you might've forgotten about. Mm -hmm. You left it on, on your own. All right, so that wraps up our Q2 uh, spa social marketing, spa social media marketing strategy little workshop. We hope that um, we hope that you found that useful and absolutely 100% feel free to repurpose this. You know, if you're going to do uh, Q2, reuse it for Q3 and Q4 and on and on and on. Um, we really just want you to make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to marketing. Um, and this is a way that keeps it organized on paper as well as in your head and gives you very clear tasks for what to do next, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So that is it. Delia, do you have anything you wanted to add that popped up in your head? No, I I think that was all for yeah. me today. Yeah. yeah, that was so. This was a big a podcast, a big training. Um, and if you are already doing something like this, well done. If yes. this is something brand new to you and you're like, oh my word, this is going to help, um, please let us know how it worked for you. We'd love to hear your feedback on it. And as usual, if you do need any support, um, for your digital marketing, your spa digital marketing, or you're just so done with doing this on your own and you are ready to outsource it. We do all of that. We do all the strategy and all of the implementation for email marketing, for social media, website, um, kind of, if you got a spa business that needs marketing, we can market it. <laughs> we've got the directions for you. Okay. That's it for us uh, for spa business mastery. And we will see you in a few weeks for more spa business tips and information. See you then. Bye.